Greetings, Shalom, Jerusalem Jane, standing here at my kitchen table. It's been a while since I made an update to you, but I was in the hospital and I had surgery, so coming home I had to recover to give my body a chance to rest, to recuperate. Uh, I live alone, so everything that needs to be done I'm doing by myself. So that's why I have been uh, taking out and been a little bit quiet and also why I'm not out and about these days covering the election. Yep, you're right. We have entered a very significant week here in Israel. This coming weekend, it's going to be Pesach. The Jewish people are going to celebrate that they were delivered. They were crying for a deliverer to get them out of bondage in Egypt. And God heard their cry and baby Moses, the prince of Egypt, was used to get them out of bondage. And eventually, after a little detour in the desert, they made their way to the promised land. The Jewish people are home in a beautiful, strong land of the Bible. And tomorrow, here in Israel, they're going for the fourth election in two years. Yep, you heard me right. The only democracy in Israel, in the Middle East, is having the fourth election in two years. This is because the last government we had, the unity government that was made between Likud and, and uh, Blue and White, Benny Gantz and Netanyahu, was anything but a unity government. And when they failed to pass a budget for Israel, the that government was dissolved in December last year. So tomorrow, more than 6 million Israelis are heading out to vote. I could be speaking about this for hours, but the way it works here in Israel is the Israeli parliament has 120 members. So of course, in order to be able to make a coalition to have the majority, you need 61 seats. The party that get the most votes is normally the one who's being asked to try and form a government. For the past almost 12 years, that has been Benjamin Netanyahu. His Likud party is always the party who has the most votes. And according to the polls, it's going to be the same this year. That's a given. So the question is, the other parties who have said, we will support Netanyahu, we will get behind him to try and reach 61 seats so that Benjamin Netanyahu can continue as the prime minister. Are those parties going to get enough votes? These are the religious parties. These are the religious ultra-Orthodox parties. These are the religious Zionist parties. And then, of course, we have Yamina with Naftali Bennett, who has been about 10, 11 seats uh, in the latest poll. He has not committed to supporting anyone as prime minister. Then we have New Hope with Gideon Sa, who actually broke away from Likud, where he has been his whole life. He's out saying, uh, we are not recommending Benjamin Netanyahu. And then we have on the other side, to the left, the center left, um, Avigal Lieberman with Yisrael Betenu. We have Yair Lapid, uh, who is the head of the opposition. He has been prognosed uh, about 18 seats. So they are literally lying neck to neck right now. So the Bible doesn't say if you like the current government, if you like the current prime minister, if you feel like it, pray for Israel. God is commanding on it in his words, comfort, comfort my people and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. My prayer always is, God, let your will be done. God, the person, the man, the woman that you have rose up or risen up for this time in history to be the leader of Israel, let your will be done. That is always my prayer. We don't know what tomorrow brings, but God knows everything. He knows the future. 
So I want to end this video by just really encouraging all the Bible-believing Christians, all the people who are standing in the gap for Israel, to come together and pray for the land of the Bible, the land that God made a covenant with, the people that God made a covenant with, the land of the Bible is true. God never changed one word. God never take any promises back that has been given to the Jewish people. God put his name down on this land. What happened in Israel always affects the rest of the world. This is the front door to the rest of the world. So thank you for praying for Israel for such a time as this. Pray for the election. Pray that the right government is going to be sworn in and that they will continue to do what is right for Israel, for this nation to be as strong as possible with Iran still moving in, still attacking Israel through their proxies, uh, Hezbollah in the north. Israel is always on high alert with Hezbollah with, who has hundreds and thousands of rockets pointing towards Israel. They are digging high, high professional expensive tunnels to, to go in and attack Israel. The same is happening in the Gaza Strip with Hamas building tunnels, sending rockets into Israel. So it has never been more important to, to stand in the gap for the land that God chose out of all the nations around the world. Of course, I will keep you updated about the election throughout the coming days, who's going to win and who got what mandates and what votes. So thank you, everybody, for standing with Israel. Thank you for praying for me through this surgery that I went through coming out on the other side. Uh, there is a suitcase here. Things are happening in my life. Hopefully within the next week, I will be able to share what is next for me in my life. Um, it's a defining moment. It's crunch time for me asking God for directions regarding my destiny. So it's all very exciting as we are entering the week of Pesach of Passover. God bless you, everybody. Mwah. Kiss and love from Jerusalem, Jane. Bye.